Good morning, Rabbi. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> a good morning. A good morning. All right, all right. With the help of Hashem, we are learning Eruvin Daf Samach. We're going to be learning more about two chatzeres or two locations that have a wall, a halachic wall separating them, and there are ladders that allow people to go over the wall and then to go down from the other side, whether those ladders render these two locations as one location, whether these ladders bechlal, never render them into one location, or as we have been learning, that we have the luxury by Eruvin, that generally we go Lakula, to take whichever position will bring about the more, the greater leniency, the greater Kula. We're going to be learning a story about the amazing deliberation that Abaya had, and the Gemara is going to go through his deliberation, how to make an Edo for a town, that's an Yiddish Al-Rabim, and as we have been learning, and therefore needs to have a excluded area, question is, does that excluded area need to have the option, the halachic option, of being able to join the rest of the city with the Shittu voice, or do we say that even if there's an area that had they wanted to join, putting aside this rabbinic takana of needing to leave us a, 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 a excluded area, they would anyways not be able to join. You can argue, well, if that's the case, if they couldn't join, then we cannot count them for the secluded area. And here again, we will see that ultimately, Abaya concluded that we can be lenient. It's even an area that is unable to join the Shittuf, if it's a somehow adjacent to the town, we can consider that the excluded area needed and be Meshatev and be Ma'arev, all of the rest of the Ir Shoradim. We're going to come back on the Samach to a Mishnah Amadalev. We're going to come back to Hilchas Eruv Tachumen because really this Pedic is about Eruv Tachumen. The next Pedic will begin the dinner of Eruv Chatzeres. We're going to give Gavaldic examples that will point out that when a person successfully leaves an Eruv Tachumen, the Eruv doesn't give you more area to walk on Shabbos. It shifts the area. But you can only walk, you know, from one side to the other side, the 4,000 Amas. Question is, where does it begin? Where does it end? So you are in the center. So the Eruv simply creates a new center, but that's not going to add to the sum total amount. Having said that, having said that, as we have been mentioning already a few times, when a person is coin a shvisa in a city, they consider their entire city only as Daladamas. So the 2,000 Amas to the east and the 2,000 Amas to the west begins outside the city's boundaries, which means that the Amas, they can really walk a lot more than 4,000 Amas because it's 4,000 Amas and however wide the city is. Masha Enke, if a person is coin a shvisa outside the city, then they can only walk 2,000 Amas from their Eruv. And even if their Eruv ends inside a city, as we keep on repeating, since they took in Shabbos outside the city, well, they can walk in the city up until the edge of their Eruv Tchum. But once they reach that end, they can go further, even if it means they stop walking in the middle of the city. However, we're going to begin on some Ahmed Bey's, the nuance, but med varam that your Eruv ends in middle of the city. But if your Eruv swallows within it the entirety of the city, as we'll show pictures, as we'll explain better, God willing, then the city becomes like Daladamas, and none of the city other than Daladamas is deducted off your Eruv. So I'm going to Shvisa outside the city. And let's say the whole city is just a thousand Amas wide. I was going to Shvisa 500 Amas to the right of the city. I walk 500 amas. Since the whole city, even if I would have deducted off my 2,000 amas, still would have been included in my 2,000 amas, I would still have another 500. I have a lot more than 500. I have a lot more than 500. Since my Eruv goes beyond the city, the whole Eruv is only 
four Amas, and therefore I can walk the 400 Amas until the city. And I can walk, I'm not going to say 1,500 Amas because you lost four Amas, and you can walk 1,400, place a 96 Amas to the other side. Okay, have a letter start. And that Samach Amadalev, we left off seven lines from the top of the Amid. Okay, for the Chevra that are learning together with us on Chabad.org, going forward, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm not going to be showing pictures because I hear feedback that people cannot see it properly. I'm using Hahoid Vahadar, a publication from the Masifti Yeshivas, and I'm going to be referring to the pictures with numbers. The last numbers that we have been learning was Shin Pei Hei and Shin Pei Vav. On the general daf of the Sefer, daf nun hey. I know that here for our Zoom class, I posted the pictures on the Zoom. If someone is able to go through them, that's fine. If you can at least use your phone, come with these pictures, moiradik, to follow along every case of the Gemara. Okay, so we're, we're going to really have, again, we're speaking about the ladder. What does a ladder do? Bakhlal, when you have one chatzid, every member of the chatzid must join the Eruf. And if one does not join the Eruv, as we will learn, God willing, going into the next Patek, even though there are, uh, so to say, solutions, you can be mevatel, yerdashos, v'chulei, but if not for that, you ruin the whole Eruv chatzedas. If you have two chatzedas, now even if there is a way to, get, to go from one to the other, there's a beauty here. If you want, you can all join together. If you want, you don't have to join together. And not joining together doesn't ruin each chutzah's eruv. So we have been learning this whole question that you had a, you had a, you had a two-story house. And it wasn't just the way we think a house. Every story had many houses. There was one yard around this entire, let's say, duplex. But again, in each, in each, in each uh, level, many people lived. The people in the bottom made their own eruv. The people from the top story, and the top story didn't go straight into the Chatzar. It went into a porch, into a Mirpesas, and then the Mirpesas went down into the Chatzar. All of the homes that opened up to the Mirpesas also joined their own Eruv. The problem was is, is that since they all used Mamish the same Chatzar, you would have thought that they need all to join together. And if one, even only one, doesn't join together, then no one can carry from their homes into the Chatzar. So we learned the case that even though the people that lived in the Mepesas did not join the downstairs Eru Chatzeres, since they built a daka, built on the ground, it had nothing to do with the ladder. We're going to review this case again with the picture. Since they built some sort of wall that sectioned off the entry to the upstairs, the entry to the porch, that is enough for them to be Megala. That again, even though technically they can only walk into the street by walking to the Chatzeres, but they were mistalic themselves from the chatzit. You know, there's using the chatzit and walking through the chatzit. They're only walking through the chatzit, and they're not joining the downstairs. Eight of chatzitas does not ruin it for the people that live downstairs, and they are able, they are allowed to walk from their homes into the chatzit, as the people upstairs can walk from the homes onto the merpeses. So again, just, just, just if you have the, the, the picture up, um, this is uh, the, the, the maskana was that the case's picture, Shin Vav, as you can see, we, we completely discounted the need for a ladder. It has nothing to do with the ladder. The, the challenge there was because the height of the merpesas is less than 10 tfachim off the ground. But since they built a fence, that properly separated them from downstairs. And the daka, again, a picture of Shin Peivov, is that little ches. It's like mamish, it's like, it's like a mezuzah, and it's a tzuras apesach on steroids. But it's a thick mezuzah, and it's a fort fachim high um, uh, lintel, fort fachim, I know it's not enough, and you can walk through it. But that is like a wall that separates them from the area downstairs, and therefore they don't want it. Okay, says the Gemara, Amar of Yehuda, Amar Shmuel. Koisel, Shedet Safa B'Sulamis. So here we're going to picture Shin Pei Zayim. You know, you have two chatzedos. However, in each, and there's a wall separating them, but there are ladders on each side of the wall, facilitating people going from one to the other over the ladder, down the ladder on the other side. Says Shmuel, says it Shmuel, I feel be even now the Pshad over here is, is not the height, it's that these ladders are in the width of the wall, taking up 
10 amas or more of the width of the wall. Now, if you remember in the beginning of the Patek, we learned that a wall, right, that is 10 amas or more, that's called a pirza. You would even argue that it's ke'ilu, there's no wall at all. And therefore, if both members of the chatzeros don't join in the same eruv, maybe no one can carry anywhere. Says Rabbi Yudha Mashmuel, nevertheless, treidas mechitza alof, the wall does not lose its status of a wall. We don't say it's like completely opened. It's not a Pesach, it's not a Pirza. No, the wall is a wall, and that's a leniency. If they want, they can join together. But if members of Chatzar Aleph and Chatzar Beis did not join together, doesn't matter. Each Chatzar, since they made their own eight of Chatzaros, they are allowed to carry from the house into the Chatzar. In other words, it's a leniency. So Rami laid Rav Berunia, laid Rav Yehuda. And the question was asked, Bimatsarto the Vechanino, the contradiction. In other words, ladders don't de facto take away the status of the wall. When Rav Nachman quoted the same Shmuel, and I know that this is Shmuel, Omar, I'm sorry, Omar Shmuel, Rabbi Yehuda Omar Shmuel, Rav Nachman Omar Shmuel, Anchi Mir Pesas, this case that we just spoke about, right, the people that live upstairs, whose homes enter that um, porch, and the people that live downstairs and go straight into the Chatzir, Sheshachachu Yervu. so what did we learn? That Im Yesh Lefaneho Daka Arba'o, as long as, thank you very much, if you go to the picture low, it's, it's, it's uh, we're ready to the next, we're ready to the next, we're ready to the top right. Go one higher, go one higher, go one higher, go one higher, thank you. So, in yesh lefanel dak arba, then eno yoiseres. And if you didn't build this dako, then oiseres. And the havamina is, why is it oiseres? Because there is a ladder, and the ladder connects these two rishuyos. Oh, and it's mavatel the mechitza. So, I answer the Gemara, as we just learned, no. The latter is not what joins the Mirpeses and the Chatzir. It's because the height of the Mirpeses, the Loi Gevaya Marpeses Asara. If it doesn't have the height of Asara, then how will the Daka help? So the Gemara says a couple of things. If the entire Mirpeses would not have been fenced off, you're right. Even a Daka wouldn't have helped. Even a Daka wouldn't have helped. Because if you can jump, mamish, from the downstairs on top of the height of the merpeses, it's considered one one chutzpah. Elama number one was that bimigu pepes ad eser amos that there was a fence. Now ad eser amos is not referring to the height of the fence. A fence has to be ten tefachim high. Ad eser means is that there is an opening in the fence. As long as the opening in the fence is not ten amos or more, if it's ten amos or more, then we bechal discount. The fence, right? It's called a pirza. No, it was closed off, and there's an opening. Now, we can even tolerate a relatively large opening. And yes, and, and that opening there was the ladder, but it's not about the ladder. See, the word is, Kivin, the Avadake, if at the base of the ladder, on the Chatzir, they build this sort of wall, but again, it's not a wall. You're walking through it, but it's like a mark. It's a simon that, ah, this is already a new entry. This is a new environment. That is Megala Das, that is Taluke, is Talik Mahacha. And that's why Lekula, even if they did not join the downstairs members in making an aid of Chatzedah, each one made their own, then the people that live upstairs don't ruin it for the people that live downstairs. Now, the people that live upstairs cannot carry from the upstairs homes to the downstairs yard. Of course not. But the point is, is that the people that live downstairs don't have dear Eruv Chatzeres, I, someone else, a member of the Schatzer didn't join. No, no member of the Schatzer, all of the people joined. Upstairs is separate. But coming back, but when it comes to ladders, we have the luxury to rule, to rule Lukul. Okay, now if you can just scoot down to the next picture as you have right over here, says the Gemara the following, perfect. I, 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 made two, I made two pictures of the same dap over here from the from the Hoyt Ve'ahadr because there's like a shine of the of the flesh, whoever's showing this, if you want, you can go down, it's a little bit better. Here you go, a little bit of the same, same picture, so very good. So guys, we're focusing now on picture Shin Pei, Shin Pei Ches. Okay, says the Gemara. Hahu B'nei Kokunoi. That's the name of a city. Obviously, they have a status of an Ir Rabin. okay? And therefore, even though the city was properly fenced off, Aleph, 
days, theoretically, you were able to make one shituf mavais, which would have allowed everyone in the city to carry from the homes into all other public environments. But this falls into the din of the we learned in our Mishnah, that since it's an ir shol rabim, or at least it was an ir shol rabim, normally you would have to leave a excluded area. How big, but some area has to be excluded. So people that lived in that big city, they came in front of Rabbi Yosef and they told Rabbi Yosef, please send to us a person that will properly arrange a edu for our city. So who did Rabbi Yosef choose? His master student, Abaye. Only Abaye. Zilan of Luhu. But Rabbi Yosef understood that there was a challenge there. And if you're not very learned, then you would be machmer. And if you might, and, and being machmer when you don't need brings about a difficulty for the members of the city. And Rabbi Yosef knew that the members of the city are learned enough that if there would have been a chumrah that was not necessary, they would have complained to him. Those might be careful. Don't do beyond what you have to. But Chazi zozen the mitzavchat Allah be midrasha that people should not come and shout at me or in the best medrash for something that was done that was not necessary. That's the way I understand. Not make sure that you don't do it good enough so they're going to come and shout that it wasn't done good enough. Don't do beyond what you need to do. That's going to cause a machloik. Okay. So Abai already understood from the words of his Rebbe that it's going to be a challenge, that there's something to deliberate here. And he has to see to it that he doesn't make a mistake. So what happened? Puzzle he Chazi saw the Hanu Bati the Psychalanar. He saw that there was a whole row of houses who had no entrance to the normal Mavoy, as you can see in this picture. Their entrance was right in front of the river. Okay. Now, obviously, they didn't walk into the river. So there must have been a street, a little narrow street that was in between their homes and the river, or a place like Venice. How, that, that's not a game. Point is, is that they were already physically separated from the rest of the city, but these houses were in the city. You know, it was, uh, it was on the block, on the street of the city. Okay, so what did he say? Omar, so Abaya says to himself that I'm a The city was sectioned off. He knew it's the Ir Shalad Abim, but he says to himself, perfect. I don't have to exclude additional homes to fulfill the Takanas Chachamim. These homes are excluded from the city. Now, what's, what's the Nekudah here? The Nekudah is like this. As we'll speak out in a moment, had, had we not had this Takanas Chachamim that an area needs to be excluded from the Shituf, these people, these homes, because of them not having proper access to the city proper, even if they would have wanted to join the Shituf, they would not have been able to. So that's the question. Could you use an area that if they wanted to join the Shituf, the Kenish, can they be used as the excluded area? Would we say that an area that's being excluded has to be an area that without Takonos Chachamim would have been allowed to be included and would have been included? Maybe an area that's excluded anyway, halachically, cannot be used for the Shir of the Mishnah. That's by his deliberation. So the Gemara says, first he decided to use that row of houses. Now, as we'll see really later, we paskin always leniently, we paskin like Rab Shimon, you know, doesn't need to have Hamishim, Hamishim de Yoyden. It, 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 it's enough people, it's enough of an exclusion as far as the size of it. But Hodor Amar Abai then said to himself, no, 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 no. It says in the Mishnah, Ein ma'arven eskulatan. Chachamim says, don't have everyone join together. And Mechayda, that implies that implies that what area needs to be excluded an area that you could have included. However, being as you can see in the picture, this row of houses had no opening to the uh, to the to the Mavoy, had no opening to the same common area to the houses across the street. That means that forget about this whole thing of make being out of the whole city. Let's begin with being out of this street. There would be no eight of chatzedos between this row of houses and the houses are underneath it because they don't open up to the same chatzed. So they're anyways excluded. So they cannot be used for the exclusion. So the only way to use this row as an exclusion, as you can see in the next picture, picture Shin Peites, I will have to demand of the members of this house, perfect, to make windows, 
Now, this is the rule. Any opening that's four tfachim by four tfachim within 10 tfachim of the ground, that's considered a proper opening. No ladders, that's an opening. So only after I'll make windows, not that they're going to use the windows. The windows allow them potentially, says halachically, to join in aid of chatzedes. Now I'll use them for the exclusion. And if I don't, but if I don't make the windows, I can't use them for the exclusion. But then Abai says, no, I don't, even, I don't have to make the windows. I know that when you learn the Mishnah, as we quoted, it's mashma that they have to be able to join. But Abai, you know, you pass it's very important to use what we call Judy prudence. It means look at cases that happened before. And if they're already paskin, that areas that are being used for the exclusion don't need to be areas that could have joined, so we can rely on that. I, it's mashma from the Mishnah, it's mashma, you can argue the other way else. The entire city of Mechuza joined the Nero, but how? Not everyone together. We had, a, we had this before. We're going to picture Shin Sadiq. He joined them, Arsini Yosa, Arsini Yosa. He joined them neighborhood by neighborhood. Now, they are all one city, as you can see in the picture. Now, really, they had areas that had ditches that separated one Mavui area from another Mavui area in which they put storage for their animals. These ditches were very deep. They were 10 Tfachim deep, and they were 4 Tfachim wide or bigger. That means, halachically, there were walls separating one area from the other. It's more much like here in the row of houses on the, on the water, which means that even if Rabba would have wanted to join the entire city together in one Eidu, he would not have been allowed to do it. Nevertheless, the city of Mechaiza was an Eir Shal Rabin, or it was an Eir Shal Rabin, and therefore it has to have exclusions. Rabba never took any place in each Mavoi as the exclusion. Rabba held that one Mavoi, one neighborhood, serves as the exclusion, the area for the other neighborhood. Amachaya. I, they, even if he would have wanted to join them together, he would not have been able to. You don't need to do that. Now, why, he's just explaining, why didn't Titaka join everyone together and just exclude a couple of people? Because he couldn't have. Bishum Peda de Beitreida. Because the areas that separated each Mavoy were storage areas where they put the food to feed the animals. And Lachayda, again, that because of it having a status of a Mechitza and a separate Rishos, one neighborhood could not have joined in the other neighborhood. But in each Mavoy, he left no shear. He didn't need to because each one served as the shear for the other. The kol chad have a shear lechavri. Afu gav the e boil le aruve bahadi adadoli mosim arve is an ayah that we're not the dike in the mission the way I understood it, and therefore I don't have to build windows in the homes that were facing the river. But then Hadar Amar no, he 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 inquired and he discovered the following. Let's go to picture Shin Sadik Allah that there was actually certain bridges that connected one Mavui to the other Mavui. These bridges went from one roof, from one house in one Mavui to a bridge, to, the, to, a, to a roof on, the, on another house in another Mavui. These bridges went over these ditches in which you place the food. And therefore, if Rabba wanted, if not for the din of our Mishnah, that you have to exclude an area, he could have been out of the whole city together. He would have been allowed to do it. And coming back over here, I know it's, it, we're not saying that it's easy access, but there is access. But over here, here meaning in the, in the city of Kokunoi, where there was a row of houses on the river, Loima Arvi at all. And therefore, Abaye decided the only way to have these houses serve as the exclusionary area, I have to make windows. But back and forth. Hadarama says about it himself, you're right that I don't have a jury prudence from um, that which Rabbi Baravua taught, said about, um, I'm sorry, Rabbi Baravua in the I don't know what I from over there, but I have another proof from another case. And we're going now to the picture of Shin Sadik base. In the city of Pompadiso. Now, this area must, again, must have been um, a, a area that needed to have an a, 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 a exclusion. You had to exclude something. What was used to exclude what was not part of the Shituf, you know what? 
a, a beitivno, a, a storage house, a house that was used to store straw. That was used as the exclusionary area. Now, it's very interesting. A storage house, being that halachically people don't live in there, forget about a whole city. If, you're, if you have one chatzah, many houses open up to the chatzah. So we mentioned that every member has to join. Whoever owns the storage house need not join. And if they didn't join, they don't ruin it for anyone. Why don't they ruin it for anyone? Because no one lives there. It's not a residence. So it's similar. It's not that they cannot join. You don't need them to join. So you would argue again, if what is used as an exclusion, only a house that should have joined, if not for this, then in the Mishnah that you have to exclude from here, so then that storage, that straw storage house should not be a valid exclusion. The fact that it is a valid exclusion is Araya, and even an area that cannot join can be used as the exclusion. And Abaya used that as his precedent. And therefore, Omar, so first of all, he didn't make windows in, the, in that row of houses. And Omar, and he said, now I understand what my teacher told me. Hainu, the Omar Limar, my master, Rabbi Yosef, told me that Chazi, Zozen, when you make an Eruf, and including the, uh, closing the city physically, including a sheet of voice for the whole city, that no one should come and have tainus. If you would have made those windows in the houses, they would have had a tainus. Why did you make a window when they didn't want to have that window? Okay, and even though, but there was a reason to have it, but after inquiring and knowing other precedent, see here what Abaya needed was not Svara, he needed to have Pashit, he needed to have a, a, a idea in all of the Shilas and Shubas that happened in the prior generations, and to use that as his source to Paskin in that city. Okay, but Gemara is referring back to the Mishnah. That when there is an Ir Shorabim, or it used to be an Ir Shorabim, so as we mentioned, that we have a Machlekes, Rabbi Yehuda and Abshimen, how large of an area needs to be excluded from the citywide Eruv? Elim Kain Asa Chutzala. Now the Chutzala is this excluded area, but how large? Ki'ir Chadasha. Now I know Chadasha means new, but that's not the meaning here in the Mishnah. There is a city known called Chadasha. And says the Gemara, Taimel and Tanabrai said that Omer Rebbe Yehuda ir achas hoisi be Yehuda ve chadasha shema and v'hoyu bacham mishim do yoyin. Fifty people live there. Fifty people live there. It's not fifty homes. We're not counting only uh, bar mitzvah men over. No, fifty people. Anashim v'nashim v'taf. In a chassidish family, it can be uh, four families, three families. I don't know or less, right? It can be if it's a three generational family. It can be one family. Doesn't matter. 50, 50 people, as, as the exclusionary, as the area that needs to be excluded, and actually, in Yehuda, in that city, they used, Chadasha was adjacent to a larger city. The city, Chadasha was stuck at the excluded area. Says the Gemari, so they asked in the yeshiva, what about Chadasha itself? Now, if Chadasha is adjacent to the larger city, so it still has the status of the Ir Shalabim. So does it need to have in it an excluded area? So the Umar says, that's, that's, not a, that's a non-starter. Yes, Chadasha needs to have a excluded area. But as we just learned before in Mechayza, one part is used as the excluded area for the other. The rest of the city is the excluded part for Chadasha. Chadasha, ki hecha di ihi havi yashir l'gada l'gadayla, so gadayla nami havi yashir l'ktana. So Chadasha itself was covered because it didn't have a shir. It needed a shir because it's part of the big city. The Gemara's question is, no, what happens if there is a city that is now as small as Chadasha? Now hold on. We learned in the Mishnah that an ir shal yachid needs no excluded area. Yes, but remember, we also learned in the Mishnah that if you start out with an ir shal rabim, and now it became an ir shal yachid, so one word is, is if it's still called on its original name, it has the status of what it used to be, right? Well, actually, this name is ir shal yachid going to the rabim. I take that back. Ir shal rabim, even if now there's only hamish and the yoyin, People might move back. People might move back. Maybe there was a lot of crime. People ran away. A new mayor will come. A new government. People will come back. 
So that's the question. If you have a city that currently has only the members of Hadasha, but it's still Mechoy if they have a Makam Shior because it wasn't here Shorabim, do you need to do you need to exclude some of that or not? So here we have a Machlika Samoyroyim. Rav Huna and Rav Yehuda. One of them says by Yashir, and one says Le Boy Yashir. And the obvious question would be, well, how much of a shear can you make? That's the challenge. According to Rabbi Yehuda, you have to you have to exclude 50. 50 inhabitants. The whole city has 50 inhabitants. Okay. Says the Gemara, Rab Shimon argues with Rabbi Yehuda. He has a much smaller amount of the shiur, and he says three chatzedos, and the definition of a chatzed is an area in which you have at least two batim. Says the Gemara, Amar Rav Chama Bar Guria, Amar Rav, that halacha ke Rab Shimon, and Rabbi Yitzchak says, I have a tradition that's even a lot more lenient. Not a minimum of six houses in three chatzedas. Three chatzedas of each one to bottom. Afilu bayis echad vechatzed achas. Now, if you read it, first of all, it's much less. But when it says bayis echad vechatzed achas, it's almost mashma that this chatzed doesn't need to have not even a single house. Because if a chatzed is the standard chatzed that has to have two homes, you know, you should have said a chatzed and a half or chatzed and a bias. So the Gemara says, chatzed achas salkabaita. Do you mean one house and maybe just a yard, even if that chatzed has not even one house? Is that what Rabbi Yitzchak means? The Gemara says, no, no. He meant to say, bias echad bi, bi chatzed achas. Okay, now, Rabbi Yitzchak cannot argue with the Tana. It's that clear. It means Rabbi Yitzchak is more lenient than Abshimen. We're going to get to that in a moment. Says the Gemara, Amalei Abayi Rabbi Yosef, Ho de Rabbi Yitzchak, where did he get it from? Was it Gemara Oisvaram? Gemara Oisvaram, guys, look inside the last Oisvus in the Ahmed. Gemara means, Shehoi Lei Kabbalah Mishum Tana, where did he get it from? Maybe he heard in the, from one of his Rebbes that there was a Tana that had a third opinion, and he's simply quoting the third Tana, or Svaram. Now, what do you mean Svaram? No Tana says like him. Sfada means she misfada hoya oimer she kach nira afapisha ein shum Tana soiver kain and the loy lifts like alochaba. Ela she kach hoyu devarim nirim. Amazing. Maybe what Rabbi Yitzchak meant was that if not for us only having the Tanoim, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon, I and my own would have held that uh, that even one bias and one chutzin is enough of a shiur. You have such a way of learning that an Amoira knows that his shita is not substantiated by anyone. He, he's b'chlal not speaking halacha lomaisa, but he's saying that al I, I, I would have said a much le- lower number. So Amar Leis Rabbi Yisav tells Abayi, I don't understand. My nafkalon me no. You know, now that we established that halacha is like Rabbi Shimon, my nafkemina was Rabbi Yisav's statement as or a gemara. Amalei, to which Abaye responds, Gemara, Gemara, Zemara, Tatiyei, should the learning of Torah only be on the level of a nigan? Now, Alpinigla, Lechoyer, the Pshat is, is that, you know, a music, a nigan doesn't need the logic. But we're not, we're not singing a melody. We're learning, uh, we're learning. I want to know. I want to know what Rabbi Yitzchak, what did he say? Did he have a tradition, like Toysva says? Did he have a third Tana? Or was he giving his own Svara? Alpi Hasidus, it's Gavalik, you know, the in Kuntras Aachen, with the Alter Rebbe speaking about David, Zemira is Karis So the Alter Rebbe there is explaining that there is the, David HaMelech was going through t- terrible challenges in life. And what gave him Kayach was learning Torah. And the Alter Rebbe explains why. Because since the entire world can be hanging and gets its life force from its one little uh, halachem, there was a little part of Torah, gives life force for the whole world, means the whole world is completely bottled to the Torah. So, he, he had koyach by learning the life. Life was difficult, but life in comparison to the Torah is insignificant. And therefore, when he learned Torah, he got no koyach to face life. Life was, it didn't matter. And, and he called the Torah a melody. Zmiro Yisraeli. And he was criticized, as the Alter Rebbe explains, because the level of Torah that is taka the source, that one halacha, is the source of the Gansa oil, the whole, all many worlds depend on one halacha. That's relatively a lower level of Torah. The way Torah is already connected to and giving life to the world, creating the world. But there's a level of Torah that is beyond all the worlds. The worlds don't even exist. 
So David HaMelech was being criticized for him only connecting to the lower part of the Torah. Can you imagine? The level of the Torah, where the Alter Rebbe says, I'm just quoting the words over here, that there's the way all the Olamas are bottled, Legabe Digduk Echad, that's the Achorayim of Torah, that level of Torah is like a melody, and then there is a higher level of Torah. This mamash gavaldik how it fits over here. In other words, if you are looking only for the halacha, when we say that all of the worlds are bottled to one digduk in halacha, the Alter Rebbe Noch explains clearly in Kuntas and we're speaking about the halacha of Torah, that it is from the halacha of Torah that the worlds are created. So therefore, it makes sense for for Rabbi Yosef to tell Abaya, you know, the halacha is like Rabbi Shimon. So who cares what Rabbi Yitzchak meant? And a Hanami, if you're only looking to the part of the Torah that's giving chayas to the world, only the halacha gives chayas to the world. That's the whole word. If it's not halacha, it's not affecting the world. When you pass in one way, it changes the world. Torah is balabas over the world. We're speaking about the halacha. But if you're connecting to the level of Torah that's higher than Nigan, there we need to understand every single memra. I don't care if that's not the halacha. Rabbi Yitzchak is an Amayda. Rabbi Yitzchak made a statement, and, and so he's wondering, you, Rabbi Yosef, are only telling me to connect to the level of Nigun? I want to get to a higher level of Torah. In the higher level of Torah, every statement is equally important, even if it's not coming down all the way. Allah Okay, Gavaldik. Now, my friends, we're coming back to the theme of the last few parakim, including case of Ma'abrin. We're learning about the Eid of Tchumen, and we're going to really review in the beginning some basic laws of Eidovin. For those of us who are using the pictures, um, we can go again to Daf Nun Vav, and we're going now to picture Shin Sadik Dalit. Shin Sadik Dalit says the Holy Mishnah. Mi Shahoya Ba Mizrach. Now, the Mishnah is not saying Mizrach of what? What is the point of reference is not clear. But let us presume that the point of reference, all right, a person is, is to the Mizrach of his town when Shabbos is coming in. And the Omar Lubnai, and he tells his son, and really as the Lavdafka to any Shliach, Arev Li Bemarov, do me a favor. I want you to put an aid of Truman, take this bread and place it to the west of my home. So let's assume that one's home, meaning one city, is the point of reference and place it to the west. Or, or even the top picture, very good. Or Bemairov, for Amar Libanoi, Arav Libanoi, Now, for a person to effectively have an aid of Tchumen, he, even though is allowed to be Ma'arev Bepas, but he has to have the halachic ability of getting to his pas. So says the Mishnah, However, he's even out, he's outside his house. But if he's halachically unable to make it to his aid of because there is more than 2,000 Abbas separating them, as long as he, yes, could make it to his house, so what happened, even though he sent a shliach and they placed aid of Tchumen, the aid of that he placed is not valid because it's too far from him. But the Chiddush of the Mishnah is, is that we don't say what we learned above, that he was Megaladas, that he, that he wants to, he's relying on his Eidov. So maybe if his Eidov doesn't go into effect, so maybe you know where his Makim Shvisa is, where he currently is, right? We don't say that over here. We say then the house becomes the Makim Eidov. Then Mutter Lebesai, not only can he go to his house, but the Besai becomes his ground zero. And as Rashi here, eight lines before the bottom of the Amr explains that it's taken not similar to the case we had before in Daf. I'm going eight lines from the bottom of the Amr in Rashi. And there's a din that if what he placed is not valid, then he has no aid of at all. Alma. Why does this not contradict it? Answers Rashi beautifully. Hanamili over there, the Baba Dera, a person is traveling. The Kiva the Bamakim plain of Yacha Liknois because it was more than 2,000 Amo. Ubamakim Raglov Loy Haba Nikhale the Liknale. No one wants to be kind of Shvisa on the road. That's why English Shvisa Klal and therefore the Yazus Mimin Kaimai. But in our Mishnah, since he is within 2,000 Amos from his house, 
Oh, he's standing in his house. Not he's, 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 he's near his house. He's near his house. And he was ma'ariv in a place that he can be ma'ariv in because it's more than 2,000 amas away. That's the Kiddush of the Mishnah that we do go back to the Beisoy being his default, Makrim Ashvisom, Yavaldik, back inside the Mishnah. So the house becomes the Makrim Eruvoy and Vasul Eruvoy. Okay, we're speaking about, we're speaking about that where he placed the Eruv, his Eruv is beyond the 2,000 amas from his house. So it's his house becomes his ground zero. And yeah, if the Makkim Eruva is beyond that, then he can go. Baitir. However, says the Mishnah, if Le Eruva, there was 2,000 Amas. But to his house, there was more than 2,000 Amas. Now, obviously, if you're placing the person, the house in the, in the center, and the person is in the Mizrah, and the Eruva is in the Maidav, how is it even possible that to the Eruv there's 2,000 Amas or less, but to the house there's more than 2,000 Amas? The Gemara is going to ask that. But if that's the case, so then the din is, Asr Labesai, Umut Now, really, really, the same thing would be that if both his house and to the Eruv there's 2,000 Amas. So as long as the place where he placed his pass for the Eruv Tchumen is within 2,000 Amas, the pass, the Eruv becomes his Makim Ashvisa. The Mishnah spoke that if Ula Besa Yasser Mikan, only to be symmetric. Okay. Says the Mishnah. So get us Ula Besa, Yomotel Eruv. Now, final then in the Mishnah, the person is in the city and he asks and he tells someone to place an Eruv, but they place it in again the iron eruv there within the 70 amas and two-thirds of an ama let's say there was a little hut there was a little house and it extended the city so it's part of the city if you place the eruv there what did you accomplish zero because the whole city including mak and if you're a kind of shvisa in the city is daladamas so it, it, you're not extending anything however now these words have to be understood if you put it chutz it should not be effective at all. As the Gemara will clarify, chutz means not chutz If you put it outside the extension, if you put it outside the iburai, even only one amo, even only one amo, cheradaf samach on the days, then zark the Mishnah, oh, then you were ready, ex- you extended your tchum, but you didn't extend it into some total. You extended it in one direction, and whenever you gain in one direction, you lose in the opposite direction. Excuse me, Masha Niskar, but you gain in one direction, Umafsid, Psan Masin, you lose it in the other direction. You know, the, the Nakuda is that the Edo does not increase the total distance you can walk at all, never. It just shifts the center of it. So if you're shifting it to the Mizrach, everything moves over to the Mizrach. Okay. Well, it's Ke'ilu, you lose one Amma. You gained an Amma to the Mizrach, you lost an Amma to the Maida. We'll see, L'chaydi, you lost a lot more than one Amma as we'll unpackage this whole Mishnah. Let's start learning the Gemara. Okay, top line of the Amma, the Psalm of Hamid Says the Gemara, we're going back to the first case. And again, the, the, the premise of the challenge of understanding the Mitzvah, so the Mishnah, is that what's the point of reference? Kosalka Daitach, L'mizrach, is L'mizrach Beisai. The house is the point of reference. L'mayda is L'mayda Beisai. So how do you understand the second case? So Mishlam in the first case, in other words, if it's you, your house, and the Makam Eruvai, whoever is in the Mizrah, whoever is in the Maidav, then your Beisai will always be closer to you. Connect the Yamada Bishlam in the first case, hey man, all the bases only is within 2,000 Amas, and the Eruv is beyond to the opposite direction, Yoisim Mikan, the Mishkach Haslam, the Mati Labesai, well, the Mati Leiruvai. The Metzias is simple to understand. Ela, hey menu Uleiruvai, Will be al paim amo, and again the house is in the is the point of reference. Ula beisa yasimikan. How is that possible? The edu the edu the markim eruvay is further than the house. So therefore, amar ab yitzchak. No, the point of reference in the mishnah is not the house. He didn't understand it properly. Me savarat la mizrach means la mizrach beisrei. Don't think that la might have beis la might la might have means la might have beisrei. No, loy. La mizrach means la mizrach benoi or shliach. As you see in picture of Shin Sadekei, Lamaidav means Lamaidav Benoi. Not everything works. In the Pashat, when you see a picture, it's Gaval. You can see that 
you're speaking about the person proper, the person who's for whom the Eruv is being put, the Eruv is closer to him, right? The second picture down on the right column, very good. The Eruv is closer to him than the house. Okay, Elamah, it's not so mashma from the Mishnah that the point of reference is the Shliach. So therefore, Rabbah Barach Shila says, no, let's go back to our initial understanding. For this, you don't even need a picture over here on the, online. You can push a look at Nashi, you draw the picture already. Elo, Teimah, Lamizrach, Lamizrach, Beisoy, Lamaidach, Lamaidach, Beisoy, Narbozden, Kigoyin, Dukoi, Beisoy, Ba'alach, Soinom. That one's house, right, is diagonally located from his own position. So if you look inside the picture on Nashi, or if you want to look inside the picture book, picture Shinsadik Vav, what you will see is, is that the Beisoy is on a diagonal. So you, it takes you more time to get there. It occupies more space. The Eidov is a direct line. The Eidov is a direct line. However, it happens to be that the Eidov is more towards the west than the house. And it's still closer. Okay, next. You accomplish nothing, but if you put a chutz let home, one ama, then you gained one ama here, and you lost one ama there. Now, if you put your eight of chutz l'tchom, you gain nothing. Your eight of is worthless. Yes, the Mishnah is saying your house becomes your default. Chutz l'tchom cycle baitach. So the Gemara clarifies ella ema chutz liibura. The final case in the Mishnah was you put your eight of the eight of is one ama outside your ibur. Oh, so that you know, so it's within two thousand amas. That becomes your ground zero, and from there you count your eight of and mashaniska do mafsit. So it's mashma that if you put it one ama to the east, so you, you now you can walk an additional one ama to the east, but you lost one ama to the west. The Gemara says, Why did you only lose one ama to the west? Mashaniska the Sulai, Lachaira, Lachaira, you're going to lose a lot more than that. Now, guys, let's just the, the whole Nakuda is that when you're kind of shvisa in a town. The whole town is now Adamas. If you're coin a shvisa outside the town, then you begin counting the Daladamas on each direction beyond four Amas. And if that were to be the case, and we were showing you showing your picture Shin Sadik test, which is already the answer, but just half what's going on over here, right? If the person is no, go to picture Shin Sadik Ches, it's much better. Very good. Now, this is already the answer, but let's read out the question. Vahatanya, problem is, we learned in Abraisa, because you're anyways inside the town, the whole town is Daladamas. So you place it, let's say, in this picture, to the right of the city. So now you can walk an additional Amma to the right. Right, when you're going in that direction. But why do you lose? Now, guys, in a case where the city, where the width of the city is more than 2,000 amas, Oigavalta, you lose. Because then your, your ground zero is your Eruv. And when you're walking towards Maidiv, if that's the case, into the city, then you can only walk 2,000 amas from your Eruv. And if your Eruv ends in the middle of the city, you've got to stop in the middle of the city. In other words, Mafsit Esoir Kula. If your Makam Ashvisa would have been in the city, and the whole city is Dalad Amas, then you can walk to the mitre of the city, not ha 2,000 Amas. The fact that you made your Eidov outside the city, even only one Amma outside the Ibu Shalir, and if the city's width eats up all of your 2,000 Amas, you don't lose one Amma, you lose the whole city. That's the picture, very good. Picture Shin Sadik Zion. So you lose much more. So answers the Gemara. Now picture Shin Sadik Ches. Ah, Loi, Loi Kasha, Khan, the Braisa that we just quoted. Picture Shin Sadik Zion, Take, Iskisha Kolsa, Midosi, Mechatsi, Hoir. And because of that, like we mentioned, whenever your Markham is outside the city, the city is not Daladamas. The city is very wide. You only get to walk 2,000 Amas into the city or 2,000 amas from your makim of your Eru. However much it, it allows you in the city, good, and beyond that, Mishkut, you can't walk further. But Khan, the case of the Mishnah, that you're taking the daik, that you only lose one amma, is Kishur, Shekol, Samidah, Simitor, Echayim. But as long as 
as long as the forget about the fact that there's a city if you're going to the left or to the might of however we're describing it and the entire city is within the 2000 amas here also we only count the entire width of the city as daladams so you don't really lose one amma, you also lose four amas, but we're not going into that detail. That, that's not bothering the Gemara at all. And this is now means that a person began Shabbos outside a city, outside a city. And therefore, you're measuring to know how far can you go in each direction. If the if one side allowed you to enter the city even halfway through the city, nevertheless, we don't say, oh, since you are in the city, so let's count the entirety of the city only as Daladamas. No. Quoting Rabbi Shob and Levi. However, but the moment. The Eruv. Even if the edge of the 2,000 Amas is the outer boundary of the city, as long as all of the city is swallowed up in the 2,000 Amas, then Gavali. The Nasis, Loi, Ho'ir, Kolo, only like Arba Amas. And if, let's say, like you have in the picture that you're showing, keep, keep, you can, no, 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 don't go there. Go back to the other. If you go back to the picture, Shin Sadik Ches, if the case was that you have, no, Shin Sadik Ches, the one, that, that if you have 1,000 amas before you begin entering the city, right here he made the whole city only 1,000 amas. Perfect. That means, we don't say you only get to walk to the edge of the town and that's it. No. The fact that the aid have allowed you to go to the end of the city, now again the city will be Dalad Amas. So you basically don't lose the 1,000 amas. Now you lose four of the 1,000. So you can walk beyond, beyond the city 996 amas. Rabbi. Now, who is the, yes. Did we learn uh, uh, one of the Tanoim had the opinion that if it ended in the city, that the whole city was Dalar Amas? We learned that before? No. So what we learned before was, and it's really a machloikas Tanoim, it's good to hazard this now. When, okay, Lokula Alma, if you're kind of visa in a city, Everyone holds the whole city. Like we live in LA, you live in Yerushalayim and Akkadish, anyone in Lahabdal, when you live it, when you live in a city, if you are in the city, the whole city is Daladamas. What happens if a person is not physically in the city, but they placed their aid of in the city? That's a machlaikas tanoim, Danny. You know, it's, here you can argue, since you placed your aid of in the city, you should be like a Bnei Ho'ir, Lakula, that you get to count the whole city like Daladamas, or, if I'm not mistaken, Shita Rabbi Akiva, he's Mahmer. He says you only get to count the whole city like Dalad Amis if physically you're in the city. Even if you place an Eruv in the city, no, well, you, you, count, you count from the Makim Eruv. But when you start walking out of that house, you're already eating up from the 2,000 Amis. And here we're learning, that's a whole different. Here we're learning you, you are outside the city. You place the Eruv outside the city. So even though we are, everyone knows. Declare it's a Mishnah. Tanoim say that if you're outside the city, if you can only have that part of the city. We learned that if it ends in the middle of a cave, you can only walk to that part of the cave. But Rabbi Shob and Levi is adding a nuance. If the whole city is included in the 2000 Amis, then again we're lenient. And now I ah, ended the the whole city is like Dalad Amis. And the last line we learned in today's shir is, is Amar Avidi. Right now, it was Rav Idi that's quoting Rabbi Shuab and Levi. First he quotes him, and then he says, Ein elu elo That this sounds like words of prophecy. Now, it says Toysvah is very important, right? The, 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 the white Toysvah is under, right, in, in the medium-sized lines. It, that's, that's, a, that's a nice statement. That's a shvach statement. Oymari. Remember this. The Bechol Mokim Sho'aymer Ein Eilu Elo Divrei Nevius Hevel Shvach. He's not saying something derogatory. The opposite. He's giving a compliment. He's saying, wow, such a thing. Koloymer Ein Chochme Kizu Shemeven Lachalik Kol Kach Svaramu Etes. Human logic never would have gotten there. Like, why would you make such a difference? If you're outside the city and now you don't get the Daladamas, so who, why? Just because the city is included why? 
Well, something said Baruch HaKadosh. Or look inside the Rashi. Rashi, three lines under the Gemara. Amr Avidi Eilad in Revius. Ke misnabe mi pni ha-gvura. She enoi noisen tam ledvarov. In other words, that Amoran Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi ledvarom halalu. The e lav the gomer lo humi rabe lehavo amar. Another detail. Divir in Revius. Right, trade a lot about Shemayim. Love Dafka is Negea here. Love Dafka. There's no Machlaikas we learned about. We already quoted the Toysus about that. Divin and Nevios means that we never, fe- we, don't, we don't have, we don't have a Tana, not in the Mishnah, not in the Brises, not in the Toysefters. We don't know the source. He got it from his Rebbe. He must have heard it from his Rebbe because there's no time for that. Why would you differentiate? We're accepting what he's saying, but we're making a statement that Rabbi Shua ben Levi is saying, David and Nevius, let's just finish reading these lines in the Gemara, back in the Gemara, because Mali calls him a Chatsi Ho'ir. Since you halachically begin your Markham Ashvisa outside the city, the city is not included, and therefore when you walk into the city, every step is eating up your 2,000 Am at home. Mali calls him a Seif Ho'ir, who all of a sudden, magically, the city becomes Daladamis. It's something that is, we're accepting, but it's Divide Nevius. Now, the way Rashi explained is going to be a good intro to the next daf, because Divide Nevius means that we don't find it on our own from any other Tana. Problem is going to be, not that you have to be the big bucky over here, but on next daf, on daf Samach Aleph Amad Aleph, you look in the bottom of the Mishnah, it's Mashma, depends what version, that the Mishnah itself implies this rule. Not that like, we're not giving a svara to it, but we can't call a dividend in Vios if there's a Mishnah that's already establishing this difference, calls of a toiche versus calls of a slave for it. Why would he make that statement that it's dividend in Vios? And more, why would we even need a Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi to teach us something that can be clearly extrapolated from the Mishnah that's willing to be continued? All right. All right. Oh, yeah. ah, these, these pictures are great. great. Good morning, Tzvika. You look fresh. Morning. All right. With the help of Hashem, we are learning Eiruvin Daf Samach Aleph. Again, for all the listeners, everyone obviously should use, if they have access to pictures, in whichever um, safer you have. Here, we are quoting both the page numbers and the picture numbers from the Sefer HaHoyd VeHaHadar, put out by the Masifta, put out by Oiz VeHadar, and we are up to Daf Nun Vav, and we're going to start on picture Shin Sadik Tes, and those of us who are learning online, I, I thank whoever is putting them up, if it makes the learning uh, a lot easier. Okay, Chavre, we left off on Daf Samach Ahmed Beis in a statement made by Rabbi Idi in the name of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi that even though we are learning a rule, that when do we say that a city is considered like Daladamas? So if you're kind of Shvis in any city today, the today, you have a Tchum Shabbos. Once you halachically leave the Ibu Shalir, you may not walk more than 2,000 Amas unless you place the native Tchum properly. However, we only start counting the 2,000 Amas after you leave the city. You can walk the whole city and you're not eating up of your 2,000 Amas. However, we also learned that if you're kind of Shvisa, chutz li'i bura shalir, then it's a whole different story. Then you only get 2,000 Amas from your Mark and Ma'edu. Yeah, you get another four Amas, but you have 2,000 Amas in each direction and not more. And therefore, if the 2,000 Amas finished in middle of a city, we don't say, since you already entered the city, and for people who live in the city, the whole city is Daladamas. So for you also, the whole city should be Daladamas. We do not say that. We say you only get to walk 2,000 Amas, halachic 2,000 Amas, with all of the leniencies that we learned above. And if it ends in the middle of the city, then you cannot go further. You cannot go, we learned dinner before, you can throw something further in because carrying is permitted if you are in an enclosed city, but you may not walk further. Says Rabbi Shua ben Levi, ah, if the whole city, if that means if I'm going mi Mizrach Lamaidav, so I have 2,000 Amas mi Mizrach Lamaidav, if the Maidav boundary of the city, if the other end of the city ends 
even if it ends at the end of the 2,000 Amas, Avada, if the 2,000 Amas overlap it, but even if it doesn't overlap it, if the 2,000 Amas ends at the end of the city, as you have a good picture in Shin Sadiq Ches and many other great pictures out there, then yes, we apply the leniency, the whole city is only dollar dollars. And Avidi made a statement that Ein Elu Elu Divrei Nevius, we quoted the Toysvis, that that's a Shvach, that uh, wow, you know, we, we, we don't have that from a Tana, we don't have that from a Mishnah, we don't have it from a Braisa, but uh, obviously Rabbi Shob and Levi, he heard it from his Rebbe, and we're accepting it, but there's no source for that because we can build that based on human intellect. So we're going to begin the sugya today by uh, really challenging that, but not only challenging it that it's not Divrei Nevius, but more than that, like, why did we even need Rabbi Shob and Levi to make the statement when from a Mishnah that God willing, we're going to learn today, it's mashma and exactly this din. The din is going to be Anshi Ir Gedoilo and Anshi Ir Kitano, as we'll speak out and we'll show with the picture. It's mamash, a picture is worth a million words over here. Kipshutai, Tzamach Eruvin, with all these pictures, became a lot easier. Okay, we mentioned in the last daf and two daf ago about a dako. We're going to have another case where people who place a small wall that wall will have a tremendously lenient, good effect as far as Eid of Tuchumen is concerned. I know that we learned this din of Daka regarding Eid of Chatzedes, but we're going to have a similar co concept of Daka. It's not the same. We'll show a picture regarding Eid of Tuchumen. We're going to have the Mishnah Daf Samachalaf that's going to have the Machlekes that we just quoted in last Daf regarding if you're kind of Shvisa in the city, the, whole, the city is Dalad Amas. No one debates that. What happens if I physically am outside the city, but I had a shliach place for me, my Eruv, in the city? Does that placement make me like the Bnei Ho'ir for whom we say that the whole Eruv is only Daladamas, which is a sheet of the Tanakama, or the Bakiva, who is the Machmer, says no, that if I'm physically outside the city, my Eruv placement is good. As long as the Eruv is within 2,000 Amas from where I physically am, you got a good Eruv. But now you count the 2,000 Amas from your Eruv, which will be a big Chumra. Um, we're going to actually have Andaf Samachala from base, a very strong statement regarding someone who paskined like Rabbi Kiva, because by Eruv we are lenient. And we, we don't paskin like him at all. Someone who paskins like him is called a Baal which is, wow, it's a very strong statement. And with Hashem's help, we'll, have, we'll start in today's shir, the sixth chapter. And we're going to be going away from the laws of Eruv, that's Eruv, of Eruv Etchumen. And now we're going to be dealing many prakim with the beautiful dinam of Eruv Echatzeros, and Mashit of Muvais. And we're going to be introducing all of these nuances, like the Rabbeinu HaKadosh puts it in the Mishnah. That means he, he starts sometimes from the middle of the sugya, that if there is a Bnei HaChatzer that did not join the Eruv, is there a solution? So we already mentioned sometimes before, there's a solution called Bitul Rishus, We'll see more details about that in the sugya that's coming. What happens if there is a goy that lives in this complex? Now, interestingly, a goy cannot join an Eruv by becoming a member of it. We're not going to be ma'ariv with a goy. We're not going to merge with him. But we need from we, we what's it's called schirus rishus. We have to rent his uh, house again. It's not a proper rental, but you have to have some rights to it. Only these things really trickle down today. Halacha lamaisen, how you make a eruv chatzedes in your in your chatzed if you live in a in a in a even in only a duplex and avade if you live in an apartment building. Bechule bechule. Let us start. We'll be left off on the fsama on the base. All right, two lines before the bottom of the of the amid. After Ravidi said that ein elu elo divrei nevius, like we read that Rashi in the last year. Again, Rashi three lines under the gemara. That right? Because if he would not have heard it from his Rebbe, right, from his father, he wouldn't have come to it. We never learned it in any of the works of the Tanoim. Somehow, Rabbi Shoban Levi, right, the whole sugya Bechal we have in at the Ksubas Daf Ayin Zayin, Rabbi Shoban Levi, he went into Ganeid and alive, right? He was the one that when there was a pandemic, he not only was not, not running, there was people that were getting this Ra'ason, Bali Ra'ason. He taught them Trader, Trader protected him, and he was rewarded. And amazing. I mean, Rabbi Shlomo Levi will have access, you know, he went to Ganadin. He learned, he learned it somewhere and he shared it with us. 
So the Rav says that Shlomo Levi is talking Gavaldik, the greatest tzaddik, right? They did when he went into Gan Eden. If you remember in Ksubas, they didn't even they didn't know. Are you Bar Lavoi? Was there a rainbow scene in your? They compared him to the Rashbi. Nevertheless, says Rav, two lines from the bottom. I don't David in views. Not only is it David in views, I bechal didn't need the statement. Tadavayu tenanihi. Both details of Rabbi Shlomo Levi. Aleph, that if you're if you are if you're kind of shvisa chutz leir and your and your two thousand amas ends bechatz in your ear, you can't go further. That is learned. Number two, if your eruv, if your two thousand amas ends besoy for ear, ooh, then the whole city becomes four amas, and you can go beyond that on other whatever is missing to make up the two thousand amas. Both are inferred from a mishnah here in the Samachalif. And now we're quoting the Mishnah. And now, Chavar, pick up, please put a picture, Shin Tzadik Tez. It says in the Mishnah, now, the, the beauty here is, is that there are two girses in the Mishnah. That will be the Nakud here. What, should I, yeah, it's, what girsa you had? Obviously, Rabbi Shob and Levi, uh, right, and Rabbi Edi, they had a different girs. So it says in the Mishnah that what? An Anshe Ir If you have adjacent two cities, one to the other, now we don't have to go that far back to remember that if the space in between the two cities, my friends, no, Let's go with Rafuna is 141 and a third. If 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 you have if you have that space or less, oh, then it's one big city. Well, then both members of both cities, wh wherever you live, you can walk 2,000 amas beyond the outermost boundaries of both cities. But if the space in between them is more than 141 and a third, right? So now they're considered two separate cities. So you have to start counting 2,000 amas. Now, before we read it inside, Pasha, look at the picture, it's great. Imagine this, the hearing made a marshal that the space in between two cities is 1,000 amas. So let's say that you live in the smaller city. So first of all, when you are walking towards the large city, the area that you're walking in your city is not deducted off your 2,000 amas. Fine, 2, 000, the whole city is dollar amas. But then you have to deduct the 1,000 amas. But then you only have 1,000 amas left. The big city itself is 2,000 amas. So when you come to the middle of the city, you ate up the second to the thousand. Can't walk more than half. But let's flip it. Let's say that you are a member of the large city. And now when you're walking towards the little city, same thing. You only start deducting your amas when you leave to the left. You walk 1,000 amas and you hit the small city. But the small city, the whole width is only 1,000 amas. So you can walk the whole city and you're, you only come to the end of your tchum when you come to the end of the city. So then now let's read, based on that understanding of the Metzias of the Mishnah, Daf Samachal, guys, on top of the Amid, says the Mishnah, that what? That Nochama, what, what are we saying? We're saying that Anshi Ir are allowed to walk the Holy Katana. Walking the Holy Katana doesn't only mean walking the Holy Katana. It means, as we'll see in a moment, I mean, it's not explicit, that the whole Ir Katana is not deducted off the thousand Amas. However, again, Samachalif, Ba'ain, Anshi, Ir, Kitana, Mahalchen, Eskoli, Ir, Kula. But they can't walk the whole city. They can't walk the whole city because their 2,000 Amma ends in the middle of the city based on this picture. And the others, the latter 1,000th Amma going from the left to the right is going beyond their Tchum. So says the Mishnah. Now, my Tama, Lav Mishum. The honey calls me dosen bechatzi oil. No, it's for the anshe ir ketano. There to the there two thousand amis from the edge of their city ends in the middle of the big city. The honey and the members of the ir gedoy law calls me dosen bisoifoy. And therefore, the whole ir ketano is not deducted at all, other than dalad amis. So here we have both dinam of Rabbi Shua and Levi. Aleph, it's not different in the views. Base who bechal needed him to say it. We know from the Mishnah. So the Gemara says that when Avidi quoted Rabbi Shlomo Levi, and he said, "Ain elu elu diri in views," Avidi had a whole different gear set in our Mishnah. I'm saying Anshi forget his version was that both members can walk the entire city. Now no one is debating that Mishnah will not become a steed against Rabbi Shlomo Levi. Forget according to the version that says that both the Anshi Irkatana could walk the whole city. The Anshi Gedoyla could walk the whole city. The Mishnah is not speaking about someone who is walking from their city. It's speaking about members of one city that chose to place their Eruv in the other city. And as we mentioned, that according to the Tanakama, the Kula, 
according to Rabbi Kiva, according to Rabbi Kiva, the leniency of you being allowed to use the whole city like Daladam is, is only if you are physically there. According to the Tanakama, if you place your Eidu, it's as if you're there. And that's the point of the Tanakama, according to his version. That when you place it, each one could walk the whole city. Because we say that even though you physically were not there, it's as if you were there. You can walk each one. That's the version. Each one can walk the whole city. The Shita's Tanakama. Now, guys, look inside the last line of the Amit. Moided loy tnan. What do you mean? It says, Veloy. The Mishnah ends with Moided. The hot nan. Ula moided. Sha amru. Nois noy apam. Apayam amo. Sha filo. Soif midasi. Kosadim ara. You may not walk the other end of the cave. So the Gemara says that, 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 you're right. From the last line, no matter, even according to the version that the beginning of the whole Mishnah is speaking about, Benoisein, right? Not, not someone who's walking, not someone who's measuring, but someone who's noisen. But the Mishnah does concludes with a case of moidet, and the Mishnah does tell us half of what Rabbi Shobhan Levi said that if you're starting here in a small city, you didn't place a eruv anywhere, and you're walking to the big city, a thousand amas together, you only have another thousand amas. That's the end. That part of Rabbi Shoban Levi's statement we know from the Mishnah. Rabbi Shoban Levi was needed to tell you that Chiddush, that if the whole city or the whole Ma'ara ends at the end of your Tchum, ooh, now we use the Kula of the whole city only being Daladamas. So if it is that stock is not written and that cannot be extrapolated. Says the Gemara, guys, eight lines on the top of the Amid. Omar Nachman, that you should know when you're going to read the Mishnah, man the Tani Anshe, Anshe Anshe, Loy Mishtabesh, O man the Tani Ain Anshe, also Loy Mishtabesh, as the Gemara is going to explain how to read the flow of the Mishnah. Man the Tani Anshe, Loy Mishtabesh, like we just explained over here, that the Mishnah in the Reish is speaking about someone who placed an aid of the other city, the Noisen. And actually, the Mishnah says, Ketzad but Noisen. The Mishnah gives that example. So that doesn't have to be further elaborated. But the one, which was Rava, who questioned Ein Eilu Divin Avius, his question was based on his version that Amanda Tani Ein Anshe, right? That Ein Anshe Ir Katanam Alchen Esu Ir Gedoyla. So the end, obviously, Umaykem Labim Moideid. But if you look inside the Mishnah, the Mishnah begins to explain itself and it gives the case of Noisen. So the whole thing doesn't work. So the word says, no, let me establish because it's all according to Ravo. Right, again, this is picture Shin Sadik Tess. And these words. And for whatever reason, or likewise, in the opposite, you were and you place your aid of Chitas Tanakama in the Mishli here, later in the Amid, will be that what? Not Rabbi Kiva doesn't agree with that, but that will be the case of the Tanakama. Okay. Right. Amar Rabbi Yosef, Amar Rami Bar Abo, Amar Afuna. So, Hebra, we are going now. We are going now. Page Nun Zayim, and we're going to picture Tov Gimel. Page, uh, I'm sorry. Page Tov Hey. Page Tov Hey. Next, next page of it. Very good. I think you went in the road. Very good. Here you got the picture. So you have people that are living in a city. No, 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 the wrong picture. Tough hay, tough hay. Very good. Let's make it bigger. Let's open it up. Whoever's doing that, thank you. To, to the other side. To the other side. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Now, see here, when you see a picture, everything becomes easy. We're speaking about people that are measuring their tchum going in the picture to the left. Happens to be that from their city, going to the left, they have to traverse a nachal. Now, a nachal can mean a body of water. A 
a nachal can mean a ravine. A nachal is an area that if you live in the city, if there would not have been a wall separating the end of the village and whatever the nachal is, people would be afraid to walk at the edge because they're going to fall over the cliff or they're going to fall into the water. And that has a tremendous effect. So he, Rabbi Yosef, right, Amanami Bar Abba, in the name of Rafuna says like this, that a city that's at the edge of this ravine or, at, or right by the river, im yesh lefamel daka, now we have to change the version from arba'a, which means tvachim. You'll see it means ten ames, ten, uh, I'm sorry if I can, uh, arba, arba is tvachim, make it into, uh, make it into uh, ames, if the wall, we're not speaking about the width, we're speaking about the height, that if there is now normally four amas is enough for this then. If the um, by today a machitza proper by us a machitza and a shul, well, we're not leaning like Rav Moshe. You have to have a machitza that's four amas high, right? Six not ten tefachim, Rabbi. Normally no, ten no, 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 no. Much, much more. No, one ama six tefachim. It's a new thing. It's a new shit. It's like a machitza today in a shul. It's around six feet. If you have now, Daka means it doesn't have to be a gesunte starke wall. But as we'll explain, that's enough. If you have a wall that's four, arba, arba, without the hay, tall, and it's not in one area, it's, it goes across the whole width of the city. So then, being that people are not afraid to walk in the area of the city, all the way up to the edge of the Nachal, they're protected by the wall. Then, when you are measuring the 2,000 amas, why do we continuously learn that if you're kind of in a, in a city, you only start counting the 2,000 amas when you leave the city. So you get to start counting it from the wall onwards. Sfas anachal means from the wall, because the wall is on the edge of the nachal, of the ravine. However, the imlav, but if there was no wall, so then we say in Moedin the Law, Elam Pesach Beisoy. Every Jew in the city, when they're walking in the picture to the left, will have another end of the trum because you begin it now. Your house is Daladamas, but you can't say that this side of the city is all part of the Daladamas of the city. Like Rashi says over here, around eighteen lines before the bottom of the narrow lines, that even the Boisei Tashmi Shtayu, people, if there's no Daka. People are afraid to, to use that part of the town. Why have a Yishuv Kavua? It's not called a proper city. And therefore, it becomes like a din we learned a few days ago. If a whole city is made out of huts, it's not called a city. So again, your hut is your Daladamas. Even if your hut is 50 Amas, it's Kedaladamas, your hut. The moment you walk out of your hut, you start counting and deducting off the 2,000 amas. Beautiful. Okay. Only Abaye, Daka, Arba Amas. Abaye is all. So Rabbi Yosef is the one that taught it. So says Abaye, Daka, Arba Amas, Omrit Lan Allah, right? Maishna, the Chol Daka, the Alma, the Arba like, like, where do you get this measurement from? When we learned a few days ago, right, the ladder and the Dakar from the Chatzit until the Mirpesas, there the height was four Tfachim. That was enough. Remember that whole thing? That it, they, they demonstrated the Menei Mirpesas that they're mistaling themselves from using the Chatzit. Where, where do we get that? Like four Amma. We never had that, right? We learned the Nesach the Shabbos. You have ten Tfachim. Mit four Amas. So Amr Lehi said, yeah. He says the difference between all of the mechitzas that we learned in Shabbos and in Eruvin. And now, Psanu Din and Daf Samach Aleph is At Khan, we were learning Hilchois mechitzas. You want to know the halachic definition of a mechitza? So normally it's 10 Tfachim, when even by leniently, by a dakos, sometimes you say even four Tfachim. But it's all because Loi Bo Isa Tashmishta. There's no fear of people walking from one side of the wall to the other area. You're not putting the wall to take away fear. You only want to know what's Hilchois Mechitza. But over here, since Be'isa since there's a fear factor, as we read in the Rashi, so the need of this Daka is not to affect a Halachic Mechitza. No, a, a city, normally you only start counting from the edge of the city. You have to address people's fear. And when you have a very steep ravine, 
then you know what stops people from being afraid, if you think about it, you know what four tfachim is? Mamish nothing. People won't lose their fear. A kid, God forbid, can fly over that wall. You need to have a proper, a proper mechitza. Taka interesting. I wonder if people make this association between our chamer dikadin of putting up a mechitza in a base haknesses to separate the makim of the anashim to the makim to the ezras, hanashim with a mechitza of four arms. Okay, Amen Rabbi Yosef. Where do we where do we find such a thing? Where is there a source that placing a daka at the edge of a town or not will will determine whether you measure your two thousand amas from the outside of your home or whether you measure the two thousand amas only outside the daka? Yes, says Rabbi Yosef. I learned this in a brace. The Tanya hit the Rebbe. She you when they get there, you're the Mechamson. So there was a hill, a very long, big hill. Geded was a city higher up on the hill, on the incline. Hamson was a village that was on the hill, but on the lower part of the hill. Both of them were inclined. And they'd be allowed that what? That all of the people of Geded were allowed to walk until Hamson. However, the Ain Bene Hamson Island, the Geded, we'll see soon what that means. No one can go together, or not all can go together. So picture Tav Vav, picture Tav Vav. Now, my Tama, I mean, make up your mind. Listen, if there would have been more than 2,000 Amas in between these two cities, then without placing an native to Chumen, no one can go anywhere. It must have been that it wasn't 2,000 Amas, nor was then. Lav Mishum, Dahane, very good. The people in Geder, they built a Dakar. Guys, take a look. Take a look at the picture. And you'll, I just want to speak out the following. That's not that clear. I'm going, Geder is on top. I don't know if you can see that that good from the picture. Hamson is in the bottom. At the, at the lower part of Geder, they built a Dhaka. This four ama tall, thin wall. In the higher part of Hamson, where the face of Hamson is facing the face of Geder, no Dhaka was placed at all. Neither... Neither, I think their DACA really should have been, if a DACA would have been placed, I don't think there's a fear when you're going up. You can't fall up, you fall down. A DACA would have meant from the lower part of Hamson, but it's irrelevant over here. Now, guys, in between, this is the Nakuda, in between the DACA of Geder, the lowest part of Geder, and the lowest part of Hamson, get that, and the lowest part of Hamson, there was exactly 2,000 Amas. Not in between the, the places of Geder and Hamsan that face each other. The lowest part of Geder to the lowest part of Hamsan is 2,000 Amas. Now, why do you keep on saying, we say like this, that if the people of Hamsan, since they don't have a Dako going from them to lower than Hamsan, so we view the whole Hamsan like a city of Tzirifin. If you put the picture back up, it's going to help. And therefore, everyone measures the 2,000 Amas from their house. Now, the people, the people that live high up, they're going to make it to the beginning of Geder. But the people that live all the way down will not make it there. Masha Enkin since Geder built a, a Daka, and they are allowed to only begin counting the 2,000 Amas. Even the people that live high up in Geder. They only start counting the 2,000 Amas when they go beyond the Daka lower to Hamsan. Well, like we mentioned, from the, Daka, from the Daka of Geder to the lowest part of Hamsan, there's 2,000 Amas. So B'nai Geder can walk in the whole Hamsan. The people that live higher up in Hamsan, they can walk a little bit into uh, Geder. But the people that live all the way in the bottom of Hamsan, they can only enter Geder a little bit and like we keep on mentioning, that the moment your town 2,000 Amas ends in middle of the city, you only have until that end. Lav Mishum, the honey, meaning Geder of Adaka, the honey, Loy of Adaka. That will be the source that Rabbi Yosef is saying that we got this halacha from, and it could be. However, you should know that Ki Asad of Dimi Amar, that he came to bubble and he taiched, that I'll tell you what happened to Braisa. It's a whole different, has nothing to do with the uh, Eid of Tchumen. It was a whole different thing. That Tat Ruge, Mitat Gedel, People that lived in Geder, they were aggressors 
The people that lived in Hamson, they were the victims. We're not speaking about the Geferlich aggression. We're speaking about a certain behavior that whenever the Bnei Gedet, when they made a Fabrengen, which happened on Shabbos, when they made a Lachayim, when they made Kiddush, they acted very aggressively to the people that lived in Hamson. So Rebbe said, Kitir is not about are you allowed halachically to walk because you're going beyond the Tchum or not beyond the Tchum. He made us a Takana, Kiskin. What was the Takana? That the victims, the Bnei Hamson, Rebbe says, don't go to Bnei Gedir. We're not blaming the victim, but sometimes you tell the victim, if that person is bothering you, don't go there. So hold on, if it's about them not going there, so the Gemara says, how did they learn so in Eretz Yisrael? Umayshna Shabbos. So he answers, because of the Shichem Shichrus. During the week, people are working. On Shabbos, people they make Kiddush, they make a Fabrengen, and there was always fights. And if, why, how did the fights happen? That when the, the Hamsa Nickers, when they went together, they were, they were assaulted there. So the Gemara says, so then why did Rebbe allow B'nai Gedr to go to Hamsan? If they act aggressively, Rebbe should have said on Shabbos, these two communities should not see each other at all. So the Gemara says, look at this lesson, Kalma, B'loi Masei, a dog outside his city, is Shein Shinin Loinavach, will not bark for seven years. You know when the B'nai Gedr acted, acted aggressively, when they were in their own domain, when they were in their own city, but if they're going to Hamsan, then they didn't have that aggression. I, why did it not reverse? Hashta Nami, but now wouldn't the Bnei Hamsan take revenge? Nami, Mitatni gave Bnei Hamsan, Bnei Gedder, Fakir Bnei Hamsan are in their own domain. So the Gemara says, no, Bnei Gedder, they were more aggressive. Kulahai, like Kaifalu. In other words, the Bnei Gedder would never have tolerated any aggression towards them. Go out. Because that's another meaning. Now let's come back to the uh, uh, initial understanding, as we explained of Rabbi Yosef, yet it has to do with Tchum Shabbos, where we're going to give other ways of explaining where you can have two cities near each other, and Bnei Gedir can walk in the whole Bnei Hamson, and the people that live in Hamson cannot walk, at least not in the entirety of Gedir. So Rabbi Safra gives another explanation, that Ir Ho'asuyom, Kekeshes Havyom, we're speaking about Hamson. Now guys, look at picture, She Tavches, that Hamson is made like a smiley face, or some people like making a frown face, whichever way they choose. Oh, now if you make the picture a little bit bigger, what are we going to see over here? You're going to see again that when you go to the edge of Geder, when you go to the part of Geder that faces Hamson, from there until the end, until the other side of the Keshes is 2,000 hours. So therefore, as you can see, B'nai Geder, the whole Geder is only Daladamas. Forget about a DACA. You don't need a DACA for this understanding. They can go to anywhere in, the, in, in Hamsan. Now, if you do remember, if the bow, if the area between the edges, between the arms, would have been a drop less than 4,000 Amas, had there only been one area that would have overlapped, if you're going over here horizontally, that the people from one edge would have been walking 2,000 amas and they would have shared even only one amma with people from the other edge, then bachlal, the whole thing doesn't work because the 2,000 amas, right, doesn't have to go to the other end of Hamsan. Then we say already that we make this yes and we make this bowstring. The case here is, is that there's 4,000 amas or more. So there's no bowstring over here. Now think about it. Take a look at people that live in Hamsan. Yeah, people that live in Hamsan, if they are going, from the outer edges, right? Then they can walk the whole Gedir. But if you're coming from the furthermost part of Hamsan vis-a-vis Gedir, if you are walking from there, it's Kavalik. So yes, you'll be able to enter Gedir. You'll be able to enter Gedir, but we keep on learning, right? Rabbi Shuab and Levi. Maybe, maybe you, can, uh, you can be Madaik from the Mishnah, according to Rabbi's version, maybe not. But here you get to where the 2,000 Amas ends in the middle of Gedir. You can't walk the entire Gedir, Gavaldik. That's one. And the third approach, aside of the one that they said in Marava, again, connected to Erev Tchumen, Navdimi, Bar Chinano Amar, Anshi Ir Gedoyim, Anshi Ir Ketanavoy. Same concept. You know, it's Gedir was a large town. Hamsan is a small town. I don't need, right, again, you have to you want to look at the picture, but we already have that concept, picture Tav Zion. The part is, why do you have to make a Keshes? Make a push it. In other words, there is a thousand Amazon between the two cities. 
not 141 or less. And they're considered two separate cities. Every, they, they forget about a DACA. Everyone gets to walk beyond their city 2,000 amas because of the, uh, the Ir Ketana being completely swallowed in, even without the Din of Rabbi Shoban Levi. They can walk, they can walk the whole Ir Hamsan because it's all inside 2,000 amas. The Anshe Hamsan, when they're going to their right, so they, they don't count their city, that's Daladamas, but they begin deducting the 1,000 amas to get together. But once they enter together, they only get to walk 1,000 amas and gather, and that's the end of that. And this version of Safra gave the Keshe's answer, and Rav Dimi gave the Anshe Gedoyla answer, and so learned Rav Kahano. Rav Tabiyoimi had similar, he had the same names of the Amoyroim. He had the same two other approaches that will not allow this to be the source of the Daka of Rav Yosef, nor was then he didn't have the details as to who said what. As we learned above, Rav Safra Keshes, Rav Chinano Anshir Gedolo. However, Rav Safra, but Rav Tzviyem Masniachi, that Rav Safra and Rav Dimi Bar Chinano, one of them explained the Brayso that it's Ir Al Soyik Keshes Avoy, and the other and the other one of these two Amiroyim explained it Anshir Ir Ketanah Va Anshir Gedolo Avoy, and according to this latter version, Rav Tzviyem's version, we don't know which one gave which approach. Now we have a total of four different ways of understanding that statement from the Brayso of Rabbi Hit. Okay, now that we quoted, that's amazing, at least it's on the same daf. Now let's learn the Mishnah. Says the Mishnah, the guys, we are going here. Our girsa is the girsa of, of, of Ravidi, not the girsa of Rav. Now again, there has to be more than 141 and a third separating them. And what is the, now look at this gears, and now there's no chasurim achsar here. Kesat, what are we speaking about? We're not speaking about measuring, we're speaking about one member of one city who placed an aid of Tchumen in the other city. And likewise, the same Allah will be someone who is a member of Yerketano. But he chose to place his aid of Tchumen in the Yerketano. Panakama holds, that not only if you are in the city, you get to count the whole city like Daladamas, but even if you only place your eight, if you get to do the same. Comes along Rabbi Yaakov and he says, No, I'm waiting to you if you're Koina Shvisa in a city, the whole city is only Daladamas. You only start counting Alpaimamo Chutza of the Ibura Shalir. But if you placed your eight of there, you won't be like the Bnei Ho'ir. You can walk the whole ear. You know what? You can't even walk the whole ear. If the whole ear is more than 2,000 amas, you only have 2,000 amas from your Mokameir. To make his point, that if someone places his ear in a ma'ara, in a cave, then she'ein lo yel v'amakim eru v'al payim amo, and we don't say that first the whole cave is aladamas, and only beyond the cave do you begin counting, guys. This is a given. I want you to know, and everyone agrees that this is a din by a cave. So Rabbi Kiva is using the din of amara as a challenge against the Tanakama. So they tell him, we agree with you, but you know when we agree when no one lives in the cave. Amrulai emosai. That taka you don't count from outside the cave. You only count from the place of your bread. That bezman she'ein by doyoyin, avol yesh by doyoyin, mahalach haskul of a chutzol al payim amon. And therefore, there are just a detail. And again, if you want to take a look at the picture of this detail, page nun ches, a picture tough yud nimzer kal toicham al gabo. If you place the eruv on top of the cave. Then you only get to count 2,000 amas from the Makkaim Eruvay. If you place the Eruv inside the cave, you have to go to the next page over here on the, on the, on the Zoom. If you place it inside the Malik, then when you are allowed to count the whole cave only as Daladamas, top picture to the left, then you only start counting from outside the Malik. So Kal Toicha. You place it inside, and you and you get the count to two thousand amas only from outside the cave is more me al gabo. And now, according to any version, the Mishnah concludes: Ole moidei shomru nice and al paim amo. 
is only al Amo. If you are calling a Shavisa outside the city, even if the 2,000 Amas brings you inside, Shafilo Saif Midasi Kali Bama'ara, you don't get to say, I'm already inside the cave so I can walk in the whole cave. No, we don't say that. You, yeah, you, you can only walk up until the end of your 2,000 Amas and not beyond that within the cave. And this again is Lakula Alm. This is a person who was kind of Shvisa outside the cave or outside the city. Daf Samach Aleph, Amen Beis, turning to Amit. Yeah, we're good. Says the Gemara, and now we're going to focus on the Machlekes over here between uh, Rabbi Kiva and the uh, Chachamim and the Tanakama. Amen of Yehuda Amar Shmuel, Shovas Meir Chareiva. Zot Rashi on top of Amar, the first line that we're living in a city, not that the city is destroyed. The walls are intact. That's very important. A city that right now has no inhabitants, you are shoivis in the city, not placing the Eruf. You are in there with Abanan, Mahalech, a school of Mama. Even though no one is living in the city, since physically you are in the city, the whole city for you is Daladamas, you only start counting the 2,000 Amas beyond it. By the way, the Shainim say, Rabbi Kiva's Moida. When, when Shmuel is saying let Abanan, it's for the next statement. Everyone is made if you are kind of Shvisa physically inside, even though it's Chareva. You're in the city, the whole city is Daladamas. However, Rabbi, that's, well, what does that mean? You're in a city, there's houses everywhere, but there's just no people there? That's what that's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. However, if it's only Hiniach Es Eruve Bi'ir Chareva, now, let Abanan, even though the Abanan in the Mishnah, when you place your Eid of in an inhabited city, Latanakama, it's just like you being there. But since not you're there, nor is the Iri a settled city, it's Ir Chareva. Now, like Rabbi, here is my so to say, and you don't start counting it outside the city, outside the walls of the city. So holds Rabbi Huda Mashmo. However, Rabbi Elazar, the Amoira, disagrees. And he says, no, Lachachamim, no difference. Echad Shabbos. The Echad Hiniach, even by a ear Chareva. According to Rachachamim, Mahalach is Kula. A Gansa Kula is like Dalad Amis, and therefore, Ruchutzala, Al Paim. Again, I know Al Paim Amo. Al Paim Amo. And not a thousand nine nine six. Two thousand Amo, because the two, the Dalad Amis of Yomakim Shvi, so we also learned that. Is even that is not deducted when you only when you are only beginning to count outside of it, it's not deducted oh, from your 2000 Amon. So let's begin. It says the Gemara may sway this Kasha will be against the sheet of Rabbi Elozon from our Mishnah. And that's a given. And, and the Mishnah says it's a, it's a, it's a Ma'ara that no one lives there. So they told him, yeah, 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 we're Moida, but you know when? This man she'en by the Which means, uh, oh, by the In other words, in other words, says the Yomara, ha be'en ba the Yoyin, then the Chachamim a Moida to Rabbi Kiva. That what? That uh, you don't count from outside of the city. That's Mama Shekasha and Abelazah. What's last of Good. So says the Gemara, no, 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 no. The case of the Mishnah and the case that we're discussing is not the same case. When the Mishnah says, Ein boy in the cave, it means that Ein ladiro. The cave is partially collapsed. That's what we read the top Rashi. When it's not Shaykh for it to be inhabited, that is when even the Chachamim Amoida, you don't count from outside the cave. Masha'enk in the Machloikas over here, and Shittas Rabbalazon, is that if you have a Ir Chareva, the city is ruled. Then, according to the Chachamim, even though it's Chareva, you only start counting from outside the walls of the city. Ma'alach HaSkula and V'chutz Allah Paima. Baiter Toshma. Says in Abraiso, Shabbos Be'ir, Afilu Hir Gidoyla Ke Anti Yoichiyo, Antiochus, right? That was the uh, the name of the generic name for the king. You know, that was the capital city. So even though it's a large city, you know, we're speaking about a um, 
or bimaro or in a cave, I feel like even if the cave is as large as the cave of Sitkiyo, my friend Sitkiyo built a cave from Yerushalayim, you know, until where? Until Yerichai. And not only that, imagine that. Or somewhere in the Yam HaMelech region. And, and, when, and, and when there was the Churban, when Sitkiyo knew that it's time for him to run away, that was his escape route. And Hashem made a nest that there was a deer that was running on the ground exactly over where he was running in the cave. That's how the, the, the Babylonians hopped him. So when he exited the cave, they got him, and the, the tragic ending of the whole story. So that's called Mo'aras. So even if you have a cave that's as long as the cave of Sidkiyo, says, Mahalech Eskula V'chutzul Al Paimam. Now, yes, we already differentiated between a cave that's completely destroyed versus a cave that's only not inhabited. But now the question is based on the premise that the Braisa gave two cases. So we're going to use one to be the teacher and the other one to be the student. Which one in the Halamin are we, which one is the teacher, which one is the student, that the Eid is like a Ma'ara. Ma'ara. Not, not the Chareva that it's it collapsed. Chareva means that it's not inhabited. That the Eid, that this Braisa is speaking about is Chareva. And in that, what does it say in the Braisa? Shamas Ma'ir. So let's be Medayik. Only when you shop us. Now hold on. Manu. If the author of this Braisa, it will be Rabbi Kiva, then why do you have to Michal, speak about a Chareva based on the premise that it's a Chareva? According to Rabbi Kiva, if you place an aid over even in a Yeshiva, in a Yeshiva, you also, according to Rabbi Kiva, will not count anything beyond your aid of itself. El Olav, the author must be Rabbana. Ah, and here let's be Medai, the time of the Shavasin. Avli Niyach, Ibai Niyach, the Chachamim will be Moida, right? Because it's Chareva, this is like. Shmuel against Rabbi Lazar that uh, you don't get to count Kula v'chutzal al paimamo. So the Gemara says, no, no, no. You know who says that the teacher is the ear and the, that the ma'ara is the teacher and the ear is the student? Ella say that ma'ara this ear is the teacher. The ma'ara is the Talmud. That the ma'ara is dumi the ear. Faked the ear is yeshiva af ma'ara yeshiva. And faked and the brayse is Rabbi Kiva. That holds that that you only if you're not there if you are not there you only have from your eruv. However, as we learned, that Akiva only argues with the Tanakama. If he niach, but Ubishavas, he's moida. But ask Sigamara, hold on. Now that we mentioned Ma'ada Sitkiyo, now Ma'ada Sitkiyo we're giving as a premise is considered a uninhabited cave. How can you say it's inhabited? So the Gemara says, no, no, that's not the meaning of the Braisa. The Braisa only used that as an example to show you the huge size of the Ma'ara. Kima'ara said, Kiyo, as far as the size is concerned, no, but this Braisa is Ma'ara Dumi the ear. We're speaking about Yeshiva. But it's not like Ma'ara said, Kiyo. You're right. It's like the Ma'ara said, Kiyo, as far as it being large. But like Ma'ara said, Kiyo, the Ilu Hasam Chareva, especially nowadays, no one lives there. Nowadays, meanings in the times of the Gemara, certainly now, but the Braise is speaking about a cave that's inhabited. And the town of the Braise is Rabbi Kiva, who differentiates between you being Maniach versus you being Shabbos. Okay, and the final, final story of this uh, Patek, based on the Machlekes and the Mishnah, that Mar Yehuda Ashkechino Levnei Mavrachto, he found that the people that lived in Mavrachto, that they had a large Beis HaKnesses outside of the city. Now, the Beis HaKnesses itself, without even an Eruf, was within the Tchum of the city. There was, no, there was no inhibition for people to go to the Beis Medrash on Shabbos to learn, as it was common that the Bata Medrash and Bata Knesias were outside the city. El there was another city further from the Beis HaMedrash, and it was advantageous to have a Eid of Tchumen placed in the Beis HaKnesses, and that will become your Markham Shvisa, and, and therefore, anyway, you can walk there because you're within the 2,000 Amas, and that will allow you to walk in the other direction by right the 2,000 Amas. So he found the Komoisvi Eid of Bey Knishta, the Vei Agoivar, that was the name of the Beis HaKnesses, Agoivar's place, but they, they were not the Dayik we're in the Beis HaKnesses to place it. So guys, let me just speak it out by heart. According to the Chachamim, according to the Tanakhama, Itaka makes no difference. 
because wherever you place the Eruv, it's as if you were there. And if, if it's as if you were there, that entire enclosed area is Daladamus. You anyways only begin counting further from the outside of that building, like from the outside of the city. According to Rabbi Kiva, that if you're not physically shoves in a enclosed area, even you you are maniach there, you counted from the Eruv, then it would have been a greater advantage for them to place it in the base medrash in the farthest place of the of Mavrachta. That would just give them that many more amas on the other direction. So Amar Lohu, so Marihuda tells them that Gavu Beitrei, you should place it further from the city of Mavrachta. Why? Because since you're counting it, obviously it's going like Rabbi Kiva, you're counting it only from that place onwards, so you want to get another couple of amas. It was probably a very base, a very large base Aknesis. Could be the base Aknesis took up uh, 500 amas. You would have gained a lot. So Amal Lohu Rava to Mari Yehuda while Palga Bal Machleches Divider Beiruv and Leisla on the Chashla the Rabbi Kiva, like he was so upset that he's pasking like Rabbi Kiva based on the premise. Not the halacha kichaveiro. We're not going into the klali halacha. We're going here into the klal by Eiruv and Rabbi Golu Kula, and therefore the Tanakhama of our Mishnah holds that you are in your Makim Eruva. Your the entire Beis Haknesses only takes up. Daladamas makes no difference where in the base Aknesses are you placing your Eruv. Chavra Hadran Allah Kates and Ma'abnam, we will return to you. Or Hashem, we have time at least to begin the sixth chapter. And now, even though we got off and we spoke a little bit about Eruv and now we're going to come back to the Iker Prakim that speak about Eruv and and Shitud Mogwais. Now, the, the, the rules. Nachamol. Rashu Sayachid Midai Raisa. I can carry from any Rishus Hayachid to any other Rishus Hayachid. There aren't any restrictions on a biblical level carrying in a Rishus Hayachid. However, if you have two Rishus Hayachid that are adjacent one to the other, however, they don't belong to the same owner or to the same ownership, then you have to be ma'ad of them, they have to merge to become ki'ilu, equal owners everywhere for people to be allowed to carry from one ownership area to another ownership area. And even if you are a shutaf already, like from your house to a common area in an apartment building, but your house only belongs to you. The common area also belongs to you, but it also belongs to your neighbor and to the other neighbor. So th- you can't carry Midrabanan. Now, if there was no aid of Chatzedus made for a keli that began in the common area, you can carry it to another part of the common area. That's okay because you're not changing ownerships by that movement. It's going from the hall to the other end of the hall. But carrying from a bias, l'chatzel, l'chatzel, a bias is something for which you have to make an aid. Step number one. Step number two, what happens if you have many people that live in this apartment building and one of them did not join the Eruv? Now you got yourself a problem and there's a solution. And that solution can even be done on Shabbos itself because prior to Shabbos, get an Eruv from him. The solution is called bitul rishus, that if he's mevatel, his ownership in the common area towards everyone else, we're going to learn a lot more details as we get into the Patek, whether he meant to be mevatel his house, we'll get, we'll get into all those details later. Bitul rishus means we are, uh, we are allowed to say he's not, he doesn't even exist. Yet. Another, one other hagdama, and that is, what happens if a goy lives here? So we're going to begin in the Mishnah with a machlekes tanoim. If it's only one yid and one goy, if bechal, that's a problem. We'll speak that out in the Mishnah. But in a case where there are many yidin and one goy, so the din of bitul rishos doesn't function for a goy. The din of eruv doesn't function for a goy. We don't want him to join the eruv. The only instrument that's needed halachah lemaisa with a goy is schirus. So, for example, if you have today an apartment building and you have a manager, it doesn't matter whether the manager is either a guy, but if there, are, if there is a guy or goyim that live in this complex, the manager owns enough rights in all of the apartments because he's the manager. That means that if something needs to happen, if there's a leak, he has the right as the manager to go into the apartment to fix it. If it's coming from that apartment that belongs to a guy, that's enough ownership. And if the manager shares... His ownership, because once a year before Pesach, we give him $10, and we tell him we want for you halachically uh, to share with us your balabatishkeit in everywhere. So that's called your soichet enough from the goyim. 
So you have to be soichir from the goyim, and you have to be ma'arav with the yidin. Okay, that's enough introduction, at least to begin the Mishnah. Now, it's, again, it's not, we're not learning the Rambam that was, uh, that organized the Torah Shavu with the big klalim, and then you go from the general to the details. Here, we're learning Mishnahis, we're going right away into a, a prat. Says the Mishnah. Let's begin the page. The Mishnah begins a case where there's one Yid and one Goy. Or, very importantly, the other one is not a Goy. Well, it's a Yid. But it's a Yid that's not Moid in Eruvin, which means he's not going to do Eruvin. So says the Mishnah, Got yourself a problem. Even only one Goy. Now, Yes, there is a solution for schirus rishus. We'll get to that. But if not for that, if not for a solution, his presence is a problem, as is the presence of someone who's not moida be'eruf, so therefore he's not going to participate. However, I want you to know when it's only one Jew and one other, one other, you have to have other than this problematic person, problematic, but not problematic because as far as the aid of it is concerned, they, they create a halachic problem. You have to have two yidin, that they already are mechuyiv to make an aid with each other. Now, if on top of that you have the goy, oh, now you got yourself a problem. If the third one here is a yid, but he's not moida be'ed of, and therefore he's not joining the aid of chatzedas, now you got yourself a problem. But if it's only one and one, it's not a problem. We'll see in the Gemara the reason for that. Next, Omar Rabban Gamliel, Maise be Tzuduki Echad, and we're speaking about not a goy, right? Tzuduki Echad, look inside the Rashi Chavre. Tzuduki Echad, Kosava Rabban Gamliel, Einoi Ka'akum. They're very important. Veloidomi Lekuti. Many times we refer to Kutim as Goyim because according to many Tanoim, their conversion to begin with was not a conversion because we call them Geirei Arroyois, Veirem Geirem Gemurim, Abol Tzeduki, he sadly is rejecting the oral title, is Yisrael, Elama Venepach Leminus, because Veirem Oedem Tzeduki Vapeh. But the point is, is that a Goy cannot be Mavatol Rishus. From a Goy, only Schirus works. A yid can be mevatel reshus. Even the Yisrael who yachay levatel reshusai b'shu b'loishem schirus, elama he's not moider. If he's not moider, maybe he won't do bittul. Maybe he'll do bittul, but then he'll retract his bittul. Ah, so that's what we're going to focus in over. So back in the mission, there was a tzaduk. Shoy lari manu mavim reshulain, and we couldn't use the mavui because he was not. Ma'arev with us. So for all Morlano Abba, Rabban Gamliel's father was Rab Shem Ben Gamliel. He tells him, listen here. He went ahead and this Tzuduki said, you know what, I'm a vatal my reshus. But he was afraid that he's going to undo his vital reshus. So our father told us, Maharu, v'hoitziu es ha'kelem l'mavui. Right away, do an action which demonstrates that he doesn't have any ownership. We don't need his permission to do something. Let's use the Mavui based on the fact that he was completely mevakalit to us. Because if we won't maharu, use the Mavui, then he will be able to be mevakal his vittal. Guys, look inside Rashi very importantly, the first widest line in Rashi. Right? Maharu v'tziyah that the hechziku boy, kedei the the kiven because kiven the kiddush hayoyim miyad kedei shleiachse boy that he held that as long as the other people would would make use of his vittel, they would do an action that would demonstrate that only they're the balabatim in the common area. They don't need his permission. If they do it when Shabbos comes in. Now that tzuduki cannot nullify his bittul rishus. So chaparain, before Shabbos comes in, do an action which demonstrates that his bittul is where he's making use of his bittul. Now you concretize, that's the word, his bittul. That's one version of what Rashbag told his son. That Abba 
the father of Rabbi Gamliel, told Rabbi Gamliel, Maharu, va'asut solcheichem ba'mavui. Even, even if before Shabbos began, you, so to say, you demonstrated that we're not, we're not rechening zich with him. We are using the mavui. Doesn't help. He always has the koyach to undo his vittel. So, and my friends, he was mavatol rishos, as long as he stands by his vittel, you're good. But at any given time, he might undo it. So if there's anything you have to take from your house into the mavui, do it now. Maharu ma'asun sarcheichem ba'mavui. Let's read inside the last line of Nashi. Right, the second to last line of Nashi. Even if at the Shabbos, according to his version, you made use of his bittle, it's not going to concretize it. Because he can always be mavatal his bittle. Nevertheless, matzu, matzi aladurabe. So therefore, like we mentioned, the whole issue of making use of an Eruv and a, and a, and a, and a shoot of Mavois is to carry from your house into the Mavoi, or from the Chatzin into the Mavoi. So he might, he might change his mind. So everything that is in the Chatzin that you want to get into the Mavoi, Chaparai now. Because the moment he will do something that will demonstrate, as we'll see in the Gemara, that he retracts his vittel, because he doesn't believe in all of this, then his presence will, he's a Yid, his presence will mess up that shituf and that eruv. God willing, a lot more to be con- a lot more to be continued regarding the sulsuk. Guys, that's a chaparai. We have to make a brach on the lulav and go run to shore. Good. Skoyach. So, I think. Run out. All right. All right. Okay,